the greatest thing my mother ever gave me was my little brother. On one hand, I got an instant playmate, which was awesome most of the time. On the other hand, it provided plausible denial. <laughs> right? Broken lamp, wasn't me. I didn't do it. But you might want to ask the new guy. Okay? Now, if that sounds cold-hearted, it's because it is. But it was the 60s, and it was every kid for themselves. We're talking about the Renaissance period of spanking children. Okay? My mother even deputized a few of the neighbors to take care of business if she wasn't around. Now, look, I'm not here to try to convince you guys that my brother and I were like these little angels that fell down from the heavens. We were not. Okay? But we also weren't the worst kids on the block either. That title went to the Sears brothers, Ricky and Peter. I know this because I overheard our babysitter tell our mother that she refused to babysit them any longer. She said, and these are her words, not mine, she said the final straw was one day she walked in and little Ricky is straddling their train set. And as the train was coming around the corner and on Peter's command, little Ricky was trying to poop in the open box cars. <laughs> yeah, we were bad. We weren't that bad. And we definitely weren't that creative, quite frankly. <laughs> but as kids, we did have creative hobbies, and one of them was making model airplanes. We used to love spending hours, you know, assembling them, gluing them, painting them, and then putting the little stickers on them when they were done. And then, after they were done, we would take thumbtacks and thread, and we would hang them from the ceiling, you know? I had mine on my side of the room, and he had his on the other side of the room, and we had them facing each other <laughs> like they were going to battle. It looked pretty cool. There were probably, I don't know, 20, 25 airplanes total. So anyway, we're bored as shit like kids get, you know? And he looks at me, and he's like, I got an idea. Don't move. And he runs out of the bedroom, and when he comes back, he's got this huge box of rubber bands. And he takes a handful out and he throws them at me. He says, okay, you sit over there and I'm going to sit over here. You take one rubber band and you shoot at one of my planes. And then I'll take a rubber band and I will shoot at one of your planes. But just go easy. We don't want to wreck them. We just want them to rock back and forth like they've been hit by gunfire. <laughs> I'm like, that is genius level thinking for a six-year-old. Right? I mean, he clearly got the bigger brain. So I grab my rubber bands, I lean up against the wall, my knees are pointing upward, I rest on my knee, I take a rubber band, I close one eye, and I let that sucker fly, and I miss everything. But before I can make an excuse, I hear a rubber band whizzing over my head, and it's, bam, a direct hit to my Red Baron prize possession. I'm incensed. I grab a handful of rubber bands and I just start multiple firing at his planes. Boom, 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 boom. He sees what I'm doing, so he returns fire. Boom, 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 boom. As you can imagine, things are wildly out of control in a matter of seconds. Planes are rocking and rolling all over the place. And then it happens. One falls. And it lands into the aqua blue shag carpet. Also known as the ocean. A wing snaps off. We both stop and just stare at it, but we knew the price of war going into this. <laughs> now, it's just about this time our mother, our loving mother, pokes her head into the door to see what is all the commotion. Just in time to see two more planes fall to the ocean. We brace for impact. She just looks at us. Now, do you... Remember the scene in the movie The Shining where Jack sticks his head in the bathroom door? She looked exactly like that. But she just closes the door and leaves. So what do we do? We commence to firing. Boom, 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 boom. Ten seconds later, the door flies open. She comes in like her hair's on fire. 
And she looks at us, and she, instead of having Jack's axe in her hand, she has the kitchen broom. And she says, if you little bastards want to break all your goddamn toys, let me help you. And she wildly, <laughs> she wildly starts swinging the broom at the ceiling. Those plain piñatas didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Plastic plain parts are ricocheting off walls, windows, furniture, us. Our little air battle had gone full-scale nuclear. And being Cold War kids, we instinctively ducked and covered. As fast as she came into that room, she was gone. Slammed the door out. When we dared to pick our heads up, we just looked at each other, and we cracked up laughing. It was the most amazing yet terrifying thing we had ever witnessed in our whole little lives. I share this story with you because, for me, when shit explodes in my life, I have to remember to dust myself off, pick up the pieces, and go find some glue. Thank you. All right, one more time for Stephen Haskins.